Our reading this morning is taken from that very well-known passage. You probably remember it from Sunday school. It is Daniel chapter 3 and from verses 13 to 25. (coughs) Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and listen carefully to this, they replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But, and these are the important words, even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than normal, than usual, and he commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and outer clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisers, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? And they replied, O king, certainly. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. And then, I'm not reading further, but we do know that Nebuchadnezzar then called them to come out, and they came out, and the fire had not harmed their bodies. God bless his word to us as we just spend time meditating on it. I was deeply, recently, I was deeply touched by a particular devotional reading. Some of you may have read it. It was headed, Trusting God Even If. And that even if really struck me. It made me realize that whatever situation we find ourselves in, God may not rescue us from the situation, but he is constantly present with us in the situation where he sustains us and enables us to work through it. And we need to trust him for this. But it's not always easy under overwhelming circumstances to trust God or to praise him because we often lose sight of God when we are overwhelmed with emotions and with pain and with difficulty. And so my theme this morning is trusting God, even if. And now back to Daniel. The Israelites had been taken into exile in Babylon, and the previous chapters tell us of how a small group of people continued to live for God in this very hostile environment. The nation of Israel was being punished for its idolatry, and there remained just a little handful of people whose hearts remained true to God. And this small group, tempted to compromise, refused to do so, and God miraculously preserved them. 
And so this text gives us enormous courage when we find ourselves in difficulty or when we find ourselves out of step with the standards and the values of the world around us. Surprisingly, though, this chapter doesn't mention Daniel at all. Nobody knows why or or where he was at the time, but the focus is on his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, of course, King Nebuchadnezzar, who had had this ginormous golden statue, golden image, probably of himself, erected in honor of both himself and the gods. And there was a dedication service held, and at that dedication service there were officials from various parts of the Babylonian Empire, and also present was this incredible orchestra of all kinds of music. And it had been announced that when the orchestra played, everybody must fall down and worship this newly erected image. And to the vast majority of people, doing this didn't bother them, except for the godly remnant, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They considered nothing more important than loving the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. And they refused to bow down to this image. And failure to do this would result in this horrific death of being thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. This was the choice facing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The world we live in is sometimes like a fiery furnace. Many people live under frightening regimes. Children are growing up knowing only violence and killing. And people around us pressurize us to join them in activities that do not honor God. What are our choices? For Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, their choice was to honor God whatever the consequences. Not whatever the circumstances, whatever the consequences. So you can imagine the scene, this immense crowd, the rising excitement, the orchestra plays, the crowd bounds, bows, and then as conspicuous as can be, you have three people remain standing. They are reported to the king by name, who was furious with rage, and he summoned these three before him. And he gives them one more chance. He assures them that it's not too late to change and become like everyone else. Just like us, the world around us is very anxious for us to conform to its ways. Thinking of our country, to gloss over wrongdoing, to sway people to its ways, to let go of morals and values, to be like everybody else. Nebuchadnezzar ends up by saying, if you do not comply, you'll be thrown immediately into that fiery furnace. And then what God will rescue you? And Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. The God we serve is able to deliver us. This is faith speaking. Sure, amazing. It's easy to refuse to bow down if you know that rescue is certain. But even if they were not rescued, they would still not bow down. And that takes courage. That takes strong faith and commitment. So the outcome was that the three believers were bound and they were thrown into the fire and it was in the fire that they received their deliverance. Not from the fire, but in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar had obviously expected that there would have been some resistance from them and so he'd had that fire heated up seven times hotter. He'd ordered the strongest men in his army to come and tie them up and throw them in and they expected to see Three corpses burst into flames, and that would be the end of the matter. But Nebuchadnezzar did not see what he wanted to see. What he did see 
caused him to leap from his seat in amazement and check with his advisors. Weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And how is it that the fourth has a supernatural appearance? Lord Jesus Christ was in the flames walking with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Now, if the three had compromised, they would never have had the privilege of walking with Jesus in the furnace's flames. Their fellowship with God would have been broken and they would have been forever bound, not with ropes or chains, but with a pervading sense of failure, disappointment and uselessness. And for them, life would have been an existence without meaning and without fellowship with God. So deliverance from the fire was not their experience. But deliverance in the fire is God's way. And the effect of this on those officials who were gaping in utter amazement at what they just witnessed, I mean, can you imagine what they must have thought when they saw this before them? There's no record of them being converted. But wow, what a strong impression of God had been made on their consciences, which probably remained with them for the rest of their lives. What a God. What a great God that we serve. So there are three important points that I want to make. First, let us stand up for our faith. We, we face similar trials today with declining morals, being too scared to stand out, and we'd rather just go along with the flow. Now think carefully about this. The morality of a nation is closely linked to its sense of God. Our nation is no longer like that. The decline started when we as a church and as a people began to compromise. And it's only when we, the people of God, stand up and say no to what displeases God that others will sit up and take note. Nebuchadnezzar was brought to realize this. He, was re he realized who God is and that God was even more powerful than him and he thought he was the most powerful king. And he witnessed what these three had done. They had took a stand for their faith in God and it was a witness to him but he had yet to still come to faith. We need to remember that our actions become a witness to others. Secondly, let us not doubt God's presence with us, even when we feel overwhelmed by our circumstances. For we know, as we've read in Scripture before, He has promised to be with us always, not just sometimes, always, even to the end of time. There are times when we are in a fiery furnace, when we struggle with diseases or battle with chronic pain or the fear of an impending diagnosis. And it's during these frightening moments that it's not always easy to trust or praise God. But He is with us even in the fire. He walks with us through the fire. And when our situation feels unbearable, God's constant presence comforts us. He strengthens us and he reassures us of his presence, of his unchanging goodness and his grace. When we look at these three men, we gain great encouragement from them. They worshipped and trusted that God was with them even when their situation seemed hopeless. Psalm 118 says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? No one can touch the eternal destiny of God's people. We may be attacked, we may be killed, we may die from diseases, but we can never be separated from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No one can touch the eternal destiny of God's people. 
Recently, I heard of someone who had to go to the Johannesburg Hospital. She was fearful about her frightening symptoms, and she prayed earnestly for God to walk with her into this situation. As she entered the hospital to ask for help, the nurses just suddenly left their post, and they gathered together and began to sing a hymn. And they didn't just sing one hymn, they sang three hymns followed by the Lord's Prayer, by which stage, through tears of gratitude, she joined in their singing, bathed in the presence of God as she faced the day ahead. Let us not doubt God's presence with us. And finally, let us trust God for his provision. He ministers to us in the face of fire, and he uses others to come alongside us when we are in need of loving care, of compassion, of encouragement, bringing us into the love of Christ, into his presence. And you know, you've heard this from people before, often people will say, God sent an angel to me at the precise moment of my need. Our trials can bring us closer to God and into a closer communion and fellowship with him because during those times when we turn to him, that is when we become dependent upon him and he sustains us and encourages us. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they never doubted that God was worthy of their worship, <clears throat> even if he didn't rescue them from their predicament. They were committed to serving God, <clears throat> no, matter, <clears throat> no matter the consequences. And that's important for us to remember. And God did not leave them in their time of need. He joined them and he protected them in the furnace. And God doesn't leave us alone either. He remains with us through our trials, even in our suffering. He's right there beside us. And even if our suffering doesn't end on this side of eternity, God is and always will be mighty, trustworthy, and good. Faith relies on almighty God's unchanging character. He's not a capricious God. My, our faith relies on God's unchanging character and not on our circumstances. Our eternal destiny is worth any suffering that we may have to endure, just with assurance that we will go to be with God. Are we prepared to say, if he rescues me, or even if he doesn't, I will serve only God? Let us be thankful that our destiny is in God's hands and not in human hands. And may our faith be like that of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego as we trust God even if and submit our lives to him. Okay. Father God, we thank you for your constant presence with us, that you come to us in the times of life that are difficult for us, Walk that path with us. Thank you that you are almighty and everlasting God. Thank you for your grace which sustains us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.